Hey Mustangs, welcome to your Thursday edition of the Daily Update. I'm Malia Masumoto. Let's get to the news. Ukraine pleads for support from NATO at a summit in Belgium. That story tops today's Mustang Minute. President Biden joins NATO partners at an emergency summit in Brussels to address the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Ukrainian President Zelensky called on Biden and other NATO leaders in a video address to provide effective and unrestricted support to his country. Soon after, the White House announced new sanctions on Russian defense companies. Russian elites, including all 328 members of Russia's parliament, are projected to be the most hard hit. A senior administration official says an effort to provide anti-ship missiles to Ukraine may be in the works, as the U.S. consults with its allies. European European Union nations also presented $550 million in military aid for Ukraine, and the White House announced $1 billion in humanitarian aid for displaced Ukrainians. The U.S. is also prepared to welcome up to 100,000 Ukrainian refugees. The Supreme Court says a Texas death row inmate can have his spiritual advisor pray and lay hands on him during his execution. The decision comes after the inmate requested religious accommodations during his execution. Prior to this case, pastors were allowed to be in the chamber but could not physically touch the inmate or speak. The inmate John Henry Ramirez was convicted of burglary and murder in 2004 after he stabbed a man 29 times and evaded arrest by fleeing to Mexico for three and a half years. While this new ruling will not change Ramirez's death sentence, his lawyer still argued for his religious rights under the law that government can't burden an inmate's religious exercise. Investigators find one of the black boxes from the Boeing 737 jet crash in China. But the recording device in the black box is so damaged they can't tell whether it's the flight tracker or cockpit voice recorder. While investigators try to figure out what is in the discovered box, they continue to search for the other one. And new terrifying footage of the crash is circulating throughout social media. Data shows the plane was flying regularly when it suddenly plummeted towards the ground. A tornado devastated parts of New Orleans on Tuesday night after moving through Texas and Oklahoma. The same region that was hit by Hurricane Katrina 17 years ago once again saw flying roofs and flipping cars. The tornado caused heavy damage in the Arabi neighborhood and killed one person. Many schools closed early and authorities reminded mobile home residents of evacuation plans and urged them to seek more reliable shelter. About 13,000 homes and businesses reportedly also lost power. Another coaching change on the hilltop happened on Tuesday. Here's the Pony Update from Grace Lawrence. Welcome to the Pony Update. Tim Jankovic announced his retirement on Tuesday after six seasons as head coach of the SMU men's basketball team. He spent a decade coaching on the Hilltop, being associate head coach to Larry Brown in his first four years. He leaves the Hilltop with a legacy, riddled with triumph and tough luck. In his first season in charge, he brought the team to a regular season and conference season championship. That year marked his only NCAA tournament appearance, getting bounced by USC in the first round and finishing number 11 in the AP rankings. Despite the initial success, his career at SMU may be defined by inheriting a strong lineup that was still being hit by NCAA sanctions. Specifically, he had to navigate the loss of seven scholarships over three years. He leaves the Hilltop with 125 wins and just under an 83 win percentage in Moody, which is the best of any head coach in school history. He also had eight wins over AP Top 20 teams, most recently this past season against Houston when they were ranked number six in the nation and have made it to the Sweet 16 in March Madness. He also coached three conference players of the year, Nick Moore, Semi Ojale, and Kendrick Davis. He cites his retirement stand from wanting to spend more time with his friends and family. The leading name in the mix to replace Jankovic is UNT head coach Grant McCaslin. Tune into Press Pass on Monday as we will continue to follow this story as it unfolds. For SMU TV, I'm Grace Lawrence. Thank you, Grace. And that's your Mustang Minute. There are so many kitties that are just discarded, so it's a good place that takes care of kitties that people discard. Dog and Kitty City is a shelter. I'm a big dog lover, an animal lover in general. It's just a place for me to get involved and help some animals out finding homes. We only have a staff of seven, and we can't 
socialize every animal that we want to. So the volunteers are very important to us. The Humane Society of Dallas County has operated the No Kill Shelter Dog and Kitty City for over 40 years. For more information, visit their website, dogandkittycity.org. Hi Mustangs, I'm Phil Rogers here with your five day forecast. The cooler weather sticks around for one more day Thursday with a high in the upper 60s and the low at 42. Friday brings picnic weather to Dallas with a high in the upper 70s and overnight temperatures in the low 40s. The heat keeps on coming the further it gets into the weekend. Saturday temperatures will get as high as 87 degrees. The high temps stay Sunday with the low in the upper 50s the rise in temperature will continue into next week with a high in the mid 80s and a low in the 60s. That's your five day forecast. For SMU TV, I'm Cell Rogers. Cub soccer team officially started two years ago and I think it's come a long way over the years. Um, it's been gaining an interest each season. We had 65 girls out at tryouts this year which is absolutely amazing and I think it shows the interest in the club team here. It's turned out to be more than I could imagine, so it's just as intense but without the major commitment. Everyone kind of brings their own thing, um, so you're not just with a ton of serious athletes, you're with people who are more focused on their academics and stuff like that. And you get to kind of come together and just make new friends that are all ages and not just in your like academic classes. There's a few that just played all throughout high school and just didn't really know what to do them mm -hmm. with themselves. Once they made it to college, they needed some sort of soccer outlet. Used to be intramurals, but now we have one step up with club. Hopefully there's a spot for you. For more information, contact Tori Fitzgerald at vfitzgerald at smu.edu. Instead of a baked potato, it's a fake potato. Doug, the 17-pound spud found last year, is not actually a potato. A couple from New Zealand submitted their spud to Guinness World Record last summer for the largest potato. While working in their garden, they found the spud and decided to call it Doug because they thought it was a potato they had dug up. But after doing a DNA test, turns out Doug is actually a root. The largest potato now goes back to an 11-pound spud in the UK. I think this must have been the first time a root vegetable got a Guinness World Record taken